1 Kings chapter 3. And when you find it, say word up. 1 Kings chapter 3. Yay, man. If you do not have a Bible, look on with your neighbor. If your neighbors have a Bible, you can move because you don't have to stand next to them because they, they ain't bring a Bible to church. We don't know what they were thinking about came to church. No Bible. So you don't got to stand next to them. You don't have to stand next to that time foolery. Huh? It's first Kings or First Kings if you're from the south. First Kings, Kings chapter 3. The third verse, when you finally say, word up, the text reads like this. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David's father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. A thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. I got to pause right there. He said, you blessed my dad because he was faithful, because he was righteous, and he walked upright. Watch this. He did not say that my daddy was perfect. He was faithful, righteous, walked upright, yet we all know he was not perfect. So imperfection does not disqualify you from living a righteous lifestyle. With what I'm saying. The text goes on to say, the text goes on to say, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, this kesed, this unconditional, unfailing love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father, although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out and come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, two means to be numbered or counted for a multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people. That I may discern between good and evil. Why? Because sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> God. For who is able to govern this, your people? If y'all um, give me a little time this morning, I want to deal with as a topic. Lord, I don't know what to do. You may be seated. Lord, I don't know what to do. Solomon says, it's hard for me to be able to distinguish between good and evil sometimes. I don't know the difference between with the right thing and the wrong way. God, I, I just don't know. This text this morning is quite Intriguing for me because we all know Solomon to be have been known as the, the wisest, wealthiest king. But we we oftentimes gloss over this part where Solomon is standing and declaring, I don't have a clue what to do. Now, now for homework, I want you to go back and read First Chronicles, I mean Second Chronicles chapter one, the first 15 verses, because it's gonna it's gonna fill in some gaps that First Kings 3 does not cover. So for homework, go back and read Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 1 through around about 15. And trust me, your Bible works at home. The text here says, Solomon says, I'm just a little kid. I'm just a child. Now, he's not saying that he's just a kid like he's like six or seven years old. We know that he was at least 20 years old, according to the chronological timeline of when David died and he became king. We know that this time Solomon already had his first son, Rehoboam. So he was at least 20 years old in physical years. Yet, yet, yet Solomon says, when it comes to doing things your way, I'm a child. 
I don't even know how to walk. He said, he said, I don't know what to do. And here he is, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, he says that when he went there, he was accompanied by what's called his assembly. This was his crew. This was his court. This was his captains, his high priests, his people uh, in high position. He was with leaders. He was a leader amongst leaders. And so he stood in front of all these people and said, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Lord, I don't know what to do. This word this morning is for those who had to stand in the sandals of Solomon. And you had to admit I've never been here before. I've never had to do this before. I'm the first in my family to ever try it. I'm having to raise kids and my father wasn't there to show me how. I'm now having to be a mother and I've never been a mom, a dad, how? I, I don't know what to do. Remember your first child and the doctor didn't say you can take the baby home? For what? What am I gonna do? Take a baby home. Wait a minute. Are y'all coming with me? Because you did not know what to do. Somebody got some bad news from a doctor that you did not plan on. What am I going to do? You ever thought that you were with your forever and forever had a, a, an expiration date. And now you got to stand there alone. I don't know what to do. When you left the funeral and realized that that loved one was not coming back, your mind, what am I supposed to do now? I can't call her. You put them in my life and now they're gone? What am I supposed to do? You find yourself positioned but you don't possess what's necessary to function. But you're supposed to know because you're in position. Have you ever been called, called up to lead something and had no idea how to lead it? It's bigger than you. So much bigger than you. I know they're going to look at me funny, but if I got to admit, Lord, This is where Solomon is. Am I just keeping a buck and tell you I found myself where Solomon is? I remember, I remember, uh, David, I remember, man, we first started our, started our church and our church started to grow a little bit. We had about, I came to church one morning. It was about 14 cars in the parking lot. I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm supposed to tease these people? And as the parking lot grew, so did some of the anxiety. And I remember, I like, I like get my Bible, have a little Bible, man, and I had this little, um, this little burgundy notepad with all my sermon notes in it. We ain't, we have, we didn't have iPads back then. We had little, the, and, I, and I tuck it, and I walk in, try to look as, try, try to look as uh, pastoral. <laughs> On the outside. But shaking on the inside. Lord, I don't know what to do. And some spiritually discerning people, they could see that I wasn't totally ready. But instead of them shouting me out, 
They just prayed me up. And, and you know, and listen, and God, let me tell you what God will do. God is so consistent. He'll put people around you that are so locked in for you winning. You'll know they for you when they don't even say a word. They'll look at you like. And you know that they got you when they don't even acknowledge your shortcoming. But they look. They look at you in such a way. I'm saying, you got this. God! I got your back. They sit there with bated breath waiting for God to do a work. And so, but, but it's not always like that, right? Sometimes we're like David at Ziklag. When, when the people that are supposed to be for us have turned against us. The people that you rode with want to leave you there. David and Ziklag, the people with them wanted to stone him. David did not have no one to say, I got your back. So David, the Bible says, he encouraged himself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One would chase a thousand. Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes, when you have no external help, you better have you. You better be bigger than your crew. You better be bigger than you. Better, you better have something in you that when that when people can't see you for your practice, they still present. Because sometimes your practice. Will make people forget about who you are. So here's Solomon. So I just want to reset the room. Listen to the room. Solomon is now saying, I don't know what to do. And I know it's so easy to come to church and look like you know exactly what's going on. But if you just keep it a bean, there are about 38 people minimum. Who don't know what's next. What am I going to do with this addiction? I got a record. What am I going to do? I don't know God. So I want to show you. What happened with Solomon specifically. As Solomon. Now mind you now Solomon. He went to this place to sacrifice and when he got there the Bible says he went to sacrifice not to get, but he, didn't, he did not go there to get wisdom he wasn't sacrificing to get some from God he just went sacrificing That's good, sir. and not only was he sacrificing he was sacrificed like a man possessed he sacrificed a thousand do you know how much work that is? Do you know how much blood that is? Can you imagine how messy that was? Because sacrificing can sometimes be ugly. It can be messy to cut stuff off. It's not always pretty to cut some things off. It's sometimes hard, bloody, and smelly. When you sacrifice something, when you sacrifice the animal, you literally, you literally cut the animal's neck. And you drained it of blood. And then you chopped the animal up. Then you spread it on the altar. And you burnt the animal. It's called a burnt offering. And the, the fire consumes the animal. Everything except for the hide. When the animal was first skinned, the skin of the animal went to the priest that helped to sacrifice it. I'll be back. The animal was skinned. De-blooded. Chopped up, totally consumed, except from the hide, and the skin was used by the sacrifices, by the priests. When the smoke went up from the burnt sacrifice, the text says it was a, it was a ascending smoke. 
an ascending smoke, the the Leviticus called it an aroma that went up to God. So God smelled the sacrifice. Worship is a form of sacrifice. And so when he sacrificed and it went up to the Lord, the Bible teaches that as it went up, we are now covered and atoned for as a result of what was sacrificed. Say it slow. The blood, the body was killed. It ascended skin used by the priest. Jesus Christ, stretched wide, pierced in blood came. His body was put to death, consumed. He ascended to the Father, and we're now covered by his sacrifice. This is a a foreshadowing of what Jesus Christ would do when it comes to sacrificing. And so this this, this Solomon, if you will sacrifice a metaphorical thousand, this was not a quick sacrifice. This took a while, and it likely took more than one day. So it's not enough for a one-time sacrifice. You think that you're good with God. It's a lifestyle sacrifice. What are you willing, what are you willing to give up to get to give up to get what you don't have? Because it's gonna require you to value what you don't have more than what you do have. Solomon had the stuff, but he didn't have the wisdom. And Solomon, what use is the stuff? If I don't have a wisdom of how to use it, what does it benefit me? They have all this stuff, but I have no idea how to walk in the capacity of where God has called me. Simon said, you can have this stuff. I need your direction. And the text, the text, this word is, um, is, um, lev, Lev Shomei, Lev Shomei, Lev Shomei in Hebrew, it literally means give me an inner ear. Give my heart ears to, ears to hear. Solomon said, God, make my heart able to hear you. If I'm going to do this thing and walk this obedience, life, if I'm going to be the type of king, that you have called me to be I need more than my physical ears I need something in my heart that can hear that can hear your voice because my ears sometimes get confused sometimes I think I'm hearing you but it really ain't you but my heart hears you my soul hears you I know your voice clearly here it is sometimes my ears say yes but my heart says stay away sometimes my ear says hey that sounds great but my heart says yo something's wrong You need, we need a heart with ears. And if we have a heart with ears and we're listening with our heart, then we'll tell the things in our ears to be quiet because we're listening. Let me say that slow. When our heart has ears, We're more than inspired to turn down the noise around us so we can hear clearly what God is speaking to our heart. See, now, yo, hey, man, I love y'all, but y'all are too noisy, and I'm trying to hear the Lord. Hey, sis, we good, but no brunch today, no Sunday brunch today, because I got to turn up my heart ears, and that's too noisy for me. Hey, I would get drunk tonight, but there's too much noise. Hey, I would have sex tonight, but it's too much noise. And I gotta turn down the noise. <laughs> yeah, babe, I would do this, but you know, I need to go home to my wife because this side chick stuff is too noisy. And I'm trying to hear from God, but it's a lot of, I love this, I like this, but this is too noisy. <laughs> Women, your sneaky link, him. Like women don't cheat. Just look straight ahead. Just look straight ahead. Just look straight ahead. She's like, Pastor, 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 so crazy. Pass me, pass me playing. (laughs) 
You got out of bed this morning, got dressed, came to church because home was too noisy. I got to come where I can hear. I got to get my, my heart ears together to go back where it's, just, where it's noisy. And so Solomon said, Solomon said, okay, Lord, because Solomon's sacrifice got God's attention. It, it's in the text. Watch what it says. It says right here, right there yonder in the 10th verse, it says, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have asked this, you have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Pause. He says, Solomon, you did not ask even for wisdom for yourself. You asked for wisdom to hear me. You only want wisdom. You only want Sophia. You only want Sophia. You only want wisdom to better hear me. You did not even ask for the life of your enemies. The people that have wronged you, you did not even ask me to get them. Because some of y'all, your prayer to God, you banking on one thing. So folk that wronged you, and you think you're real holy when you say this, but you're not. You're in your flesh. When you say, you know what? You got that. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to let the Lord deal with you. Because <laughs> God don't like. So I'm going to let the Lord. And you think you holy <laughs> because you decide to wait on God to hurt somebody. That ain't forgiveness. People, that is not forgiveness. Waiting on God to hurt somebody is not forgiveness with your dumb self. Forgiveness, forgiveness is, forgiveness is, you don't have to pay for what you did to wrong me. I now excuse you for the penalty of wronging me. You're not excused for the penalty of causing me problems. That's forgiveness. That means you're not upset. When the person that wronged you starts to excel. Oh, come on. That's the test. You're not mad. Y'all said, the devil, that Negro gonna pay for what he did to me. That's I, the, the devil. That, that just means that you're stuck. That means you're stuck and you don't really trust God. Because what if, so watch this, what if the very thing that you want God to punish somebody for was the very thing God used to draw you closer to him. Mm. Yeah, see, see, you can't be too mad at Judas. Not too mad. Come on. Because had Judas not betrayed him, he would have not have made his way to Golgotha as an unblemished lamb. And then look how Jesus treated Judas. Knowing full well what Judas was about to do. John 13 says Jesus washed his feet. Washed the feet of the one that was snitch. Well, not snitch, you know what I meant. The one that would pray for me. So, so, so he got God's attention. And God said, you did not ask for riches. And God was, God said, listen, you asked for nothing for yourself. You know what, God? God said, you know what I'm going to do? God said, I got something for you. I, I, got, I got a way of how I plan to reward you for what you did. God says, hmm, hmm, behold, I now do according to, to your word, this is God talking to Solomon. Behold, behold is arao. It means wow, like woo, bam. Where'd that come from? Behold, wow, wow. I will wow. I am now. I now do 
according to your word, behold, wow, woo, where'd that come from? Wow, I give you a wise and discerning mind. I would now give you ability to properly discern between good and evil, right and wrong, because sometimes on your best day, you still make the wrong decisions. Sometimes on a very good day, what right seems wrong and what wrong seems right. I am gonna give you the ability to know the difference between right and wrong, a discerning heart and mind I will give you so that none like you has been before you. And none like you shall arise after you. I give you. I'm going to give y'all a beautiful word. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a word that for the rest of your life, you hear this word, connect it back to God. It's, it'll be part of your shout cue. Because God says, I'm going to give you what you pray for. God says, I saw you sacrifice. You didn't just bring one bull, one oxen, one pigeon. You did a thousand. I watched how you sacrifice. Mm, I watched. I, I caught the aroma of the burnt offering. I'm pleased with what ascended to me. I'm reminded of what Abel did for me back in Genesis. How he sacrificed something that was so pleasing. I was pleased with it. But you know, Cain, he did something. He sacrificed some, but it wasn't what I told him. This was some of my $20 tippers. You sow your 20 and you feel holy. You sow with your hands, not your heart. What did God tell you to give? Yes, sir. You see, for you, your offering don't get past the ceiling. And it's not what you give. It's which do you give. You can give a what, but it's not the which. It's not, the, it's not what God says. So That's why the text says obedience is better than sacrifices. What it means by that is obedience better than sacrifice. It's not just you sacrificing or you being obedient to what God said to sacrifice. If you say it right now, I would never eat asparagus again. But God told you to give up pork chops. I'm never giving up, I'm never eating asparagus. But I thought God said pork chops. Asparagus! I'm sacrificing. But you're not being obedient. And obedience is better than sacrifice. You see, you say, I'm coming to church every Sunday. But what do you do after you leave? What does Monday through Saturday look like? Yes, Sunday. Did he tell you just to come to church? Or did he tell you to sacrifice your pet sin? You know your pet sin is, is, is kind of like, like having a pit bull. I know I'm so ghetto. <laughs> but for those of you who can identify with the pit bull pet, when you walk the pit bull, it don't just walk in a straight line. It... <laughs> hey, <all in. laughs> and there you go. Bicep this. And the stronger the pit bull gets, the harder it pulls you off the path. They don't walk in straight lines, but you call it your pet, even though it's not letting you walk straight. God Almighty. Because you say, I got it under control. God. But it's always trying to pull you somewhere you ain't trying to go. Your sin is like that pet pit bull. It's always trying to pull you somewhere where you ain't trying to go. And the stronger it gets, the harder it pulls. The more you feed it, the stronger it gets. So it's no such thing as I'm just going to sin a little longer until I get tired of the sin. The more you feed a dog, the stronger the dog gets. If you want to kill it, you got to stop feeding it. Yes, your pet, 
You know it. You had it for a long time. But it just, there's going to come a time in your life, man. Come on now. How long are you going to keep feeding this thing to my just trying to get rid of it? But you feed it. Don't tell me you're trying to be delivered from nothing that you always have a way of getting in touch with. Say it slow. Say it slow. Say it real slow. Don't tell me that you're trying to get delivered from anything that you always make sure you have a way of keeping in touch with. The cost of that is way too high. You need to cut it. Cut it, 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 He says, he said, I give you also what you have not asked both riches and honor so that no other king shall compare with you oh your days people listen he says James 1 if then you lack wisdom let him ask of God who gives liberally and upbraideth not. He says, I'm going to give you what you ask for according to your word. But because I like your style, I like what you're willing to give up. I like that you and your heart was in the right posture. Even though you may not always had the right practice, I like your style so much, I'm going to bless you also. Here's the shout cue, because I probably missed you on that one. Let me back. Let me rewind this a little bit. The Bible says that he went to Gibeon, the high place of sacrifice. Yes, high place in the Bible are not necessarily Christocentric or Yahweh-centered. There are other sacrifices made at the same high place. It wasn't that he was properly positioned. He just had the proper Posture. He wasn't necessarily practicing in the right place. He was ne- he was not necessarily in the proper place, but his posture. God looked God looked down and said, "You know what? You ain't in a pretty situation, but your posture is pure. Your practice thrown off, but your posture is pure." You ain't doing everything I asked you to do. You doing the things according to how you were taught. But your posture, your, your spiritual posture is much more pure than your practice. Say this slow, Ronnie. God does not wait for you to get your act together before he blesses you also. There's some things God going to do to bless your life even though you ain't walking right yet. He going to bless you by faith on credit because your heart, it really is in the right place. You just don't know what to do. I want to do better, God. I just don't know how. God will bless you on credit. Oh, I know I said something. There will be about 300 other people here that God bless you before you got your act together. Who am I talking to? There will be 300 people that God bless you before you got your act together. You ain't innocent. You just got to wait. I wish I had the people that God saw your heart despite your practice. He saw, he saw you and overlooked some of the stuff that you was doing. Because in your heart, have you ever sinned? Have you ever done wrong? In the midst of doing wrong, your heart was breaking while you was doing wrong. Ooh, I wish I had some real people. Have you ever been in the midst of doing wrong and got away with it in the physical, but God messed with you all the way home? That ride on the way home almost took you out. You did the thing, got away with the thing, and on the way home, God was pressing down your mind, telling you 
thought you bigger than that. You're better than that. I thought you loved me. Do you want me to bless you or not? You need to get your ass together. Don't make me come down there and put my hand against you. And you got one more time. God, who bless his name, God will let you get away with some stuff in the physical and give you the present of a lifetime in your spirit. And you think you're going crazy. You think you've lost your mind. David, they think they're going crazy because they're like, wait a minute. I used to do this and not think twice about it. And now when I think about it, I get convicted. Say it slow. I used to do this and not think twice about it. I think I must be losing my mind up in here, up in here. Because now, even if I don't do it, if I think about it, I'm convicted. That's telling me that you're not the same way that you used to be. You are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are past, and behold, all things are now new. I wish I had some people. You are a new creation. Sin don't satisfy like it used to. You are now in love under new management. I wish I had some people. I would do it, but it, it just don't scratch that itch like it used to. And so God, and so, and so, he told David, he said, I'm going to bless you also. I'm going to do some things for you I didn't have to do. Because if we keep it a buck, Sister White, if God don't do nothing else, if, if, if he don't do nothing else, saving my soul. was enough you've been through many dangers toils and snares you've already come you being here is a gift from God it's a gift yes it is too see you just giving that seat belt credit for why you walked away from the accident if you only knew how close you were to death but God blocked. If you only knew. You know how many people died of COVID? Some of y'all had it two or three times. Are you still here? Ooh, I wish I had a praying church. I wish I had a praying church. You survived COVID before the vaccine. I wish I had a praying church. You survived COVID. It was not the mask, but he did seal you. I wish I had a praying church. I wish I had a praying church. He, 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 he bless you beyond what you deserve. If he was fair, you'd be 99 places. Church ain't one. If he was fair, if he was all justice and no mercy, He said, I'm going to bless you also. That means in addition to. In addition to everything I've done. Because you showed up anyway. You still showed up. That's what I'm going to do. Not only am I going to shield you from, from some stuff. But I'm going to bless you with some stuff while I shield you. I'm going to give you some stuff. Wow. And see, this is a lot of us. Though he was doing enough, he was still blessing us. Yeah. Make it tangible. Yeah, he was, he was still, still blessing us. Still. Here, here, here. Hang on to Because I don't know. Because you got, because I got some for you, and you're gonna need some gas to get there. So I want to give you that to make sure you put some in the tank. But I'm gonna guard you, and then when you drive, I'm gonna be right there. 
walk and make sure that nothing hits you. That that's a, I'm going to keep certain things. I will bless you also. I'm going to do it also. Because you're faithful. I'm going to bless you also. Because you sacrifice and you cut something. I'm going to bless you also. I kept your mind together where you ain't lose your mind. I kept you free when you should have been bound. But I'm going to bless you also. There's more to me. You ain't seen nothing yet. You think you happy now. You think you're thankful now. You ain't seen. You ain't seen nothing yet. When I get through with you. When I get through blessing you. When I bring that thing full circle. When late in the midnight hour. I turn that thing around. You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to bless it also. Also. In addition to. Above, abundantly more than what you ever ask for. I'm gonna bless you. Also, and he and Cornelius, he says, he said something. He said something in his text. As he said, I'm gonna bless you also. And he says, I'm gonna. He says in 14, he says, here's what he says, because he can bless you. Also, oh, he can oh, he say he, he can bless you also, but you know, despite his very best blessing, we can still blow it. Because some of us are walking in the also season right now. Because he's done way more. We're in the also season now. And guess what he says? He says, after the also blessing, in verse 14, and if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, at your imperf- as your imperfect made mistakes, Daddy David walked, then I'll leave in your days. Oh. You know what? He says, he says, he says, I'm going to redeem some of those years that you wasted in a bad position. He says, if you would just take this opportunity of blessing and just obey, just walk with me. See if I want to open up the windows of heaven. And I, so there's a lot of people who you may can't take their word on a promise God is not one if he said it that settles it if he said it the response is yes and amen if God said it that settles it God says in your also season of abundant blessings try it my way this time what you got to lose your way ain't working your way your your way ain't working your way still got to cry your day still got to anxiety your way still got to feel defeated why not try God's way and it starts with a heart willing to sacrifice and a mind that ain't too proud to say, Lord, I don't know what to do. This word of God for the people of God here to be saved. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today for another didactic, dynamic service at Cornelia Christian Church. Now, here's the deal. Now's the time where you can be a part of what we're doing here in Arlington, Texas. We're reaching the world, and your gifts can help us do that. The giving options are on the screen. Either three that make sense to you, that's what you do. But please, please, please download the app to keep up with things that we're doing here at your church. One more big piece of news. If you've never been here live, you gotta fix that problem. And we wanna make that easy. So if you've never been, been before live, Cornelia Christian Church, 
we will pay for your first night hotel stay here in Arlington, Texas, so you can be here live. I'm doing a matrix, okay? All that good stuff. We want you to be here live. Why am I doing this? For no reason whatsoever. But I do want you to be a part of our worship service. So sign up, uh, contact our office. We'll take your hotel stay. Be here live. We will be back next week.